1 Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the chalice at the supper saying, This chalice is a new covenant of my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this chalice, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Lovely to see so many at Mass. Thank you all for watching. Today's Mass has been offered for John O'Brien. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we're reminded in the Gospel of the weeds. And we're full of weeds as human beings. And the weeds are from the evil one. So let us pull out the weeds now as we celebrate and call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have buried sin in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask us to bury a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Please bow your heads and pray in silence for John O'Brien. O God, who manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and may those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven, to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 33. The tent, which was called the meeting tent, Moses used to pitch at some distance away outside the camp. Anyone who wished to consult the Lord would go to this meeting tent outside the camp. Whenever Moses went out to the tent, the people would all rise and stand at the entrance of their own tents, watching Moses until he entered the tent. As Moses entered the tent, the column of cloud would come down and stand at its entrance while the Lord spoke with Moses. On seeing the column of cloud stand at the entrance of the tent, all the people would rise and worship at the entrance of their own tents. The Lord used to speak to Moses face to face as one man speaks to another. Moses would then return to the camp, but his young assistant, Joshua, son of Nun, would not move out of the tent. Moses stood there with the Lord and proclaimed his name, Lord. Thus the Lord passed before him and cried out, The Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity, continuing his kindness for a thousand generations and forgiving wickedness and crime and sin, yet not declaring the guilty guiltless, but punishing children and grandchildren to the third and fourth generation for their father's wickedness. 
Moses at once bowed down to the ground in worship. Then he said, If I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along in our company. This is indeed a stiff-necked people, yet pardon our wickedness and sins and receive us as your own. So Moses stayed there with the Lord for 40 days and 40 nights without eating any food or drinking any water. And he wrote on the tablet the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. God. Responsorial Psalms number 103. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord secures justice and the rights of all the oppressed. He has made known his ways to Moses and his deeds to the children of Israel. The Lord is kind and merciful. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. He will not always chide, nor does he keep his wrath forever. The Lord is kind and merciful. Not according to our sins does he deal with us, nor does he requite us according to our crimes. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is the kindness toward those who fear him. The Lord is kind and merciful. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. As the Father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. The Lord is kind and merciful. He said, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. The seed is the word of God. Christ is the sower. All who come to him will live forever. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. According to Matthew. Glory Glory to you, Lord. Jesus dismissed the crowds and went into the house. His disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, He who sows good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, the good seed, the children of the kingdom, the weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. Just as weeds are collected and burnt up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all those who cause others to sin and all evildoers. They will throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Then the righteous shall shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever has ears ought to hear the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let me just give a point of clarity for those of you who might be watching our Mass. Normally during ordinary time, there's a, you say the same prayers every day. But there's also a suggested Mass. And the order has a suggested mass that's approved by the National Conference of Bishops. And we here at Most Holy Trinity, we use the Pray Together Missalette. And the Pray Together Missalette takes our suggested masses and puts them out every day. So that means every day we have a different prayers at the mass, different presider prayers, rather than using the same one each day of the week. Some publishers, that's the way they do it. They have the same prayers, uh, like the 17th, the prayers from the 17th Sunday would be every day this week.
But in our one, we have different prayers each day. For those of you watching, that explains it. We go by the pray together outline. Whatever they have, that's what we pray at Mass, if you want to know the origin of, of the prayers we have. And the Gospel today is about the weeds and the wheat. And of course, I hate weeds. And I hate weeds and flower beds. And with all the rain we've been having, it's just about impossible to keep the weeds out. You know, and if weeds are not taken care of, they'll take over. And I think there's a great lesson in that for us. You know, we, we grow two crops. We grow the weed and the weed. And if we don't keep the weeds under control, they take over. So something like an addiction. You know, if, you, if, you, if you're, you're tempted to go to the casinos, uh, you know, if you have that addiction, you know, before, if you don't keep it in check, you'll, you'll lose all your money. And, and uh, the weeds, the weeds are, are, are a pest. You know, two great inventions, the weed eater and the Roundup, are, are the, 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 the chemicals they use. Now, I, I, I have no problem with the chemicals, uh, you know, uh, uh, taking care of the weeds for the most part. But I hate to see them, I hate to see the farmers using Roundup to ripen the wheat and then harvest it. Because they, 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 you know, the Roundup has been known to cause cancer. But that's a practice by most farmers. You know, before the harvest, uh, two weeks before they cut the, the hay or the bar, or not, not the, the barley or the wheat, or the oats, they would spray it with Roundup to bring it all in to ripen together. And of course, we don't know what we're eating a lot of the time. So I wish that was prohibited. Uh, so I, I, that's, that's my suggestion for today's homily. If any regulators are watching, don't allow farmers to spray weed killer on crops before the harvest. That's common practice uh, among farmers. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. <laughs> Let us pray for John O'Brien for whom the Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord God, pray. Let us pray for um, Tracy Scarborough whose funeral will be on Thursday. May God grant her return of rest in peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick, and we pray especially for Stuart suffering. Stuart is one of our young men and very active, good man, but he has cancer, and uh, uh, we pray for him and also for Fergus Bradley, who has nine lives and he has been close to the end again. So we pray for Fergus and all our sick. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our quads, and we pray that all people who are in the quads will persevere and enjoy them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the successful completion of our new church, and for all the people who work on the construction, that they're safe, they will be safe. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's guidance and direction in all that we say and do, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each of us to look at the weeds in our lives and try and eradicate them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Almighty God, we thank you for this day. Answer all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his own church. Grant us, O Lord, our merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as a saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing to him of your glory, as without end we attain. Teaching, we dare to pray. 
Evidently, Joshua had a close relationship with God, remaining in the prayer tent long after Moses left. Did God speak to him as he did to Moses? Possibly, his close relationship with God led him to have the faith that God would give the Israelites victory over the Canaanites. And God was certainly pleased with um, Joshua, for after Moses died, it was Joshua who God had led, he chose God, uh, God chose him to lead the Israelites into the land of milk and honey. This reading begins with Exodus 33, 7 to 11, but then it skips to chapter 35. What we don't read is some of Moses' conversation with God. And I think it's kind of interesting. Moses said to the Lord, you indeed are telling me to lead this people on, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet, you have said you are my intimate friend and also you have found favor with me. Now, if I have found favor with you, do let me know your ways so that in knowing you, I may continue to find favor with you. Then too, this nation is, after all, your own. I thought that was a little presumptuous of, <laughs> uh, of Moses. And, um, but um, God does answer him. And that's where we take it up, where he says, uh, the Lord, this Lord, is slow to anger, rich in kindness and fidelity, continuing his kindness for a thousand generations and so forth. So even though Moses was being pushy with God, and I thought, in a way, kind of called God's hand, God answered him and told him what he was like. But consider how long Moses and God had been communicating. There was Moses with God in the burning bush. They were in contact throughout the plagues. Moses was guided in the parting of the Red Sea and getting manna, waterfowl for the grumbling people, and pleading with God to spare the people who had made the golden calf to worship. Moses seemed to be in constant communication with God. And then, of course, Moses does bow down and worship God and ask God to pardon the wickedness and sins of his people and receive them as his own. After being bold, Moses submits to the one and only God. Now the ending of the reading is once again skipping over to verse 28. So just before that, that is when God tells Moses to get stone tablets to replace the tablets with the commandments inscribed on them. Remember Moses broke the original commandments and uh, after seeing them worshiping the golden calf. But then the reading continues. So it, it, it was kind of hard for me to figure out, wait, here's Moses talking to God about such and such, and then all of a sudden he's in the mountain. But that's what happens, there's this little space in there. The reading continues with Moses back on the mountain for 40 days and nights with God. And this is where he writes the commandments on the new tablet. This whole passage shows us a picture of a relationship of a son who feels at ease with his father and is honest and open in his communications. God directs Moses. At first, Moses refuses to listen to God. God continues to push Moses to do his will. Moses finally follows God's commands, but he pushes God to tell him his ways. God answers Moses by explaining the ways of God. Moses obeys and honors God, but he also continues to urge God to take care of his people's needs, and he's not afraid to insist that God remain with the Israelites, even though they are a stiff-necked people. Now, it made me think of my relationship with God. Growing up, I saw God as an authoritative figure. Actually, I prayed more to the Blessed Mother than I did to God. And I thought, isn't that what many children do? We go to mother first. <laughs> but about 30 years ago, 
I read in a second grade religion book that God loves you no matter what. This simple statement hit me like a brick. It was as if I understood God for the first time and it changed my whole attitude to God. I began teaching religion classes and never stopped learning more and more of the, of the love of our Father, the sacrifices and teachings of our Savior, and the protection and guidance of the Holy Spirit. My relationship with God has grown over the years and now I'm comfortable praying, sharing, and complaining to God as with any of my closest friends. Welcoming God into our lives as we give him our love and also sharing our distresses, our anger with him, builds a friendship and a true relationship. Gradually you become aware of a dialogue taking place between you and God. How awesome is that? And just as Moses worshiped God, I am compelled through love to worship God, not just because he loves and provides for me, but because he is the one and only God and worthy of my love and my devotion. Very good, John. Thank you very much. Got a QD man here. During the wedding rehearsal, the groom approached the preacher with an unusual offer. I'll give you a hundred dollars if you just change the wedding vow slightly. When you get to the part where I'm supposed to forsake all others, I'd like for you to leave that part out. The groom took the cash into the preacher's Bible and walked away satisfied. But the next day at the wedding, the preacher looked at the young man in the eye and said, Will you promise to love and cherish your lovely wife? to serve her breakfast in bed every morning and promise that you will not ever look at another woman as long as you both shall live. The groom gulped as all eyes in the sanctuary awaited his response. Yes, he mumbled. Later at the reception, the groom called of the preacher. I thought we had a deal, he whispered through clenched teeth. The preacher put the hundred dollars back in the groom's hand and said, your wife made me a much better teacher. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be God. God. Let us pray the prayer to the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faith. 